Hi everybody, welcome back to Enjoying Retirement. Today we're going to cook these guys up for dinner uh, on our balcony outside the hotel room and we'll talk about that in a bit but first we need to go out and catch our meal. We are on for every young spear fishing charters out of Isla Mirada, Florida and I can't say enough about these guys. They are just wonderful and they will uh, tailor any experience to what you're looking for. Uh, whether you're a free diver or a tank diver or just someone who wants to go out snorkeling or tour the area, go ahead, give them a call uh, and they will tailor the experience to exactly your skill level and what you want to do. We're a beginner spear fisherman, so we're basically being led by the hand here and that's just fine with us. That's what we need. We're going to talk a little bit later about why taking a spear fishing charter, but first let's get on with the experience. Then we're going to get three dives total. Each is about half an hour long, anywhere from 55 to about 76 feet on this day. And we're a little bit ahead. You can see his trigger finger sign up there. He's telling me that we've got a shooter fish ahead. I'm using a traditional spear gun while my wife will be using a three prong on lionfish. And he's trying to point out a fish to me. Uh, it's a pretty good start already, except for one thing. I can't see the fish he's pointing to. Water was a little bit murky. Later on, he told me the fish was out on the periphery but uh, I, I just couldn't see it. Okay, so we're moving on. One thing you gotta remember is this is hunting, it's not fishing. Yeah, we're going after fish, but you need to act and move and think like a hunter. And a lot of my lessons learned are gonna be uh, geared around that thought. Our guide came up upon a nice rocky area that is just loaded with lionfish. Well, that's my wife's interest. So she grabs her three prong and she is going to start hunting. And she, she's gracious enough to let me point out some lessons learned here uh, so that she can learn, hopefully others can learn too. Those are the lionfish right there. They're an invasive species. Uh, and the Florida Wildlife Commission wants them taken off the reef as much as possible. And this is one of the biggest ones I've ever seen. And she made a great shot on it, but the fish pulled right off. So one of the things I've learned with these guys is once you shoot them, you got to still keep pushing that spear forward. Um, because oftentimes they'll be hiding in rocks and you hit the rocks and you don't get full penetration. So just keep pushing it forward so that you go all the way through and make sure that you have captured the lionfish. That's a good key point to learn when you're hunting them. Uh, I'm looking at the one that got away right there, I'm keeping an eye on him, but in the meantime, my wife did exactly the right thing. Shot one, pushed it through, and we have one in the lion keeper now. That, that uh, tube uh, our guide is carrying, I'm not sure of the specific brand, but uh, the common brand is called uh, uh, Zookeeper. And that's because these guys are venomous. We'll talk about that in a bit. So the point I just wanted to make there was position yourself so that you're getting a good shot. Take the high percentage shot. Wait for the broadside shot, quartering away shot like you would on a deer, uh, and you'll be fine. Right here, she has her depth gauge and pressure gauge flopping, uh, and that kind of interfered with her reaching it. Another point I want to point out is if you can practice beforehand. Shooting a pull spear is like nothing else you've done before and it just takes a little bit of practice. And my wife had practiced in the pool before we went down there uh, and uh, she got pretty good at it. But it does take a little bit of time. Unfortunately, it had been a while and she need to, needed to rethink it because it's not a skill she uses every day in her real life. Nonetheless, she's still going at it. Um, here, once again, uh, she just needs to slow down. Don't take those top-down shots. 
wait for the shot from broadside. You have much, uh, much greater target area, much greater likelihood of getting it. Here she's doing a good job pushing the fish into the rocks to make sure that the spear goes all the way in. And once again, she's loading it up into the zookeeper. There's still more to catch and she's on her way. Uh, she got a little bit close there. She actually touched the lionfish with her spear. You don't need to do that. Uh, these spears can uh, be effective, one foot, two foot, uh, occasionally a little bit more. And like hunting, if you know your prey, you'll know that these lionfish are an invasive species and they have no natural predators in the Florida Keys. What that means is they are not afraid of humans and they will sit on that reef uh, while you come up to them and they will stay there until you shoot them, unless you scare them away. So take your time, uh, get that broadside, broadside shot, uh, maneuver yourself around, uh, and take your time and, and get the good shot. And remember, these things are venomous. If he gets away like that, don't grab him. My wife did a real good job here keeping her head. She backs away, loads up the three prong, and spears him again. And this time she gets him right into the zookeeper. That zookeeper will keep the spines away from uh, whoever is carrying it so that you don't get inadvertently stung. And those guys can sting hard. Uh, it will be painful for quite some time, so avoid it. All right, now we are moving on uh, back to hunting. She cleaned up the lionfish on that area. One thing I want to point out here is swim in a flying wedge formation. If you're with a guide, keep the guide up front. And then in our case, we have two of us position ourselves one on each side a little bit behind the guide um, so that we are covering more area and we're staying alert to what he's doing. That little sign he just gave there, he's telling me it's okay to shoot. He spotted a fish. I'm going down. I saw a fish go under this ledge, just confirming that he's the right one. Yes, it is. There's the fish. I wait for the broadside and go. So you, you can't wait forever, but you got to be prepared when the proper shot comes, take it. This guy is a mangrove snapper, uh, also called a gray snapper and they are delicious to eat. So we're gonna get him off my uh, spear, put the prong through, and then he's gonna put him on a fish keeper that he's gonna carry for us. Again, we're, we're beginners. Next time I go down, I'm hoping to do a little bit more of this for myself, but for now, it's great to have a guide and teach us the ropes. But our first dive's over, 30 minutes are up. We're gonna come up, take our decompression stop at about 15 feet for three minutes, and then come on up to the surface. The boat comes around, gets us ready. It will toss a rope off the back. It was a fairly choppy day while we were out there. You don't feel it under the water, but once you get back up, uh, you do get bounced around quite a bit. So grab the line so that you stay attached to the boat and then uh, go on up. In my case, I have about 40 plus pounds of scuba gear on, bouncing around on the boat. Just take your time, get on the ladder, and come on up. All right, so now that we're up, we're going to take about a 45-minute break on the surface. And while we do that, let's talk about why a guided tour is a good idea in my case. Uh, I didn't grow up spearfishing. I didn't grow up in Florida. And there is a lot of fish down there that is completely different from what I'm used to. Here are the few pages from the Florida game guide, fishing guide, and you can see these are all the types of fish you might encounter. Each one has a different size limit, creel limit, and season. And for somebody who isn't native to the state, it can be very difficult to understand. Another reason is I don't own a boat. They're expensive. So I'd rather uh, get with somebody, get with a company who has their own boat and who knows the local fishing area and who understand the fish and can help me uh, get them better. When you get down about 75 feet, the first color that goes away is red. Uh, red is a, dis a distinctive color on most fish, but when you get down there, uh, it goes away and it makes distinguishing fish from co nice pretty colored pictures even that much more difficult. So here we are again. That was a hogfish we just saw a few seconds ago, and we are back hunting. 
Now, scuba versus free diving. Uh, I, I really wish I were doing this free diving. Uh, that is where you go down one breath of air, not using a scuba tank like we are here. I tried for a year and a half to uh, uh, master free diving. Uh, I did everything, took an FII course, but I just could not clear my right ear. Uh, here, here I am back in the pool. This is a soda bottle filled with air. Watch what happens. That's only going down eight feet. The air volume gets compressed. Here we are back up. And it pops itself out on the way back up too. That happens to the air chamber in your middle ear. When you're scuba diving, you have a good amount of air. You can take your time. You can get down there. When you're free diving, you got to do all that on one breath and in a very limited amount of time. And I, uh, I, I just have some challenges with that, so I wasn't able to do that. But I'm scuba diving, which is allowed in Florida, not in the Bahamas. So take advantage of it. All right, I got the shooter sign. Let's get back to uh, hunting. He's going to go down. He's going to do a technique called dusting. What that does is it raises a cloud, and fish are very curious creatures. They really want to know what's going on. He's given me the sign again, letting me know which fish. We have a really nice size mangrove snapper here. I line up, wait for the fish to turn broadside, and miss. Let's watch that in slow motion. Maybe it'll help us understand what happened. Well, as I look back on it, I can see that I jerked it a little low as I pulled the trigger. And I did not aim high enough because that fish was just a little further than it should have been. If I had taken two good strong kicks, I could have closed the distance, but I didn't. In the meantime, I followed the fish, and you might have just seen a black grouper right there. Um, he is four days out of season. Otherwise, I would have quickly turned around and, and uh, taken a go at him, but it's no longer grouper season when we were down there. Now, this fish knows he's being chased, and like a whitetail, it's almost impossible to uh, catch up with one once they know there's a predator on the prowl for him. But on the way, I spot this lionfish under the rocky ledge. I wanted my wife to come down and get it, but hey, she's had her fair share already. So I'm going to grab the three prong, hand my spear gun back to the guide, and let's see if I can put into practice what I just told you uh, I was thinking about when my wife was shooting hers. So I know how the fish is lined up, so I'm going to move myself to get a better angle on the fish. I'm comfortable with the quartering away angle I had there and take the shot. I push him into the rocks to uh, make sure that the prongs are going to stay attached. And then he goes quickly into the zookeeper uh, that our guide is carrying for us. Can't say enough about our, about our guide. Uh, he did a great job. Here, uh, we're in the wedge, and I spot a lionfish um, for my wife to go take a shot. And uh, there's a lionfish up at the top of the screen, and she's going to take the shot right there. Perfect shot. Well done. But there's also a lesson to be learned in, in this one. So we're going to go back. We're going to zoom in a little bit. See that right there? That is a green moray eel, and she's within about two feet of it. She never saw it. And that's because, like many hunters, you get tunnel vision. You only see what you're going for, and you completely miss that there might be something else in the area. So that comes with practice. Um, when you're not quite so excited, just keep an eye out and make sure you understand your surroundings. Here's just a beautiful stream of uh, grunts that we saw. There were thousands of them, and it, it was just fun to watch. So in, in addition to the hunting, you're also still a scuba diver and you're just enjoying the environment. And here are seeing thousands of grunts following kind of a river pattern underwater. Uh, that, that, was, that was a lot of fun. My wife gets another chance on a lionfish uh, on this dive and she's going down. 
Once again, she kind of took a top-down shot rather than positioning into a broadside shot, but she eventually gets there uh, and she gets her lionfish. And this is another good-sized one. So into the zookeeper goes that Luke is holding for us. And um, what a great guy he was, very patient. Uh, and we had a lot of fun with him. It was our second dive with him, and we really appreciated it. All right, back up top. Let's get on with our third dive. All right, we're back in the water. And we're about to learn another symbol that, um, unfortunately, I, I don't like to see. But as I point out a fish that I think might be a shooter, I get the too small sign. And again, that, that's where having a guide comes in handy. It's very difficult to judge size underwater. Even if you get the species correct, uh, being underwater makes the fish appear much bigger than they are in person. And there is no such thing as catch and release when you're hunting. You shoot that thing, it's on a spear, you take it up top, it's the wrong size, you've got a problem. All right, moving on. Uh, he thinks he spots a fish for me. Nope, and it's too small too. That's okay. We're, uh, we're having a lot of fun, and my wife is having a great time on the pole spear, and she's going to get a few more chances at some lionfish coming up. Good shot there. Going to put that in the zookeeper. And we'll keep moving on. All right, that, that concludes our diving. There's still something I want to show you uh, when we get here. Uh, you're never safe until you're safe. Did our compression stop, now we're up. The boat's coming around. What a beautiful picture that is. That, that, that's just gorgeous. All right, so Jeff, the captain, is going to stop the boat. He's going to put the ladder down and he's going to throw the rope out so that we can uh, jump up on the boat. My wife is safely aboard. My turn. I'm pulling up the line. Pay attention. Watch the surface. Right there. You see that? That is not a fishing lure. I thought we had a fishing lure wrapped around the line and I was going to be nice enough to untangle it. That is not a fishing lure. That is a Portuguese man of war. And it got me. Fortunately, I had my wetsuit on, so it just... Uh, laid one of its arms across my wrist, but it instantaneously let you know that it got you. Um, those things float around the ocean. They're not true jellyfish. It's too long to explain what they are, but they will have tentacles 30 feet long on average, and they, uh, they give you a pretty good wallop when they hit you. Like I said, th that, that, was, that was nothing, but those, that little item on my wrist that swelled up over the next few hours gave a pretty good sting but by the next day uh, it was gone except for uh, a nice line of dots where where each of the tentacles got me but now it's time we're back at the hotel i bring a portable uh, gas barbecue with me we're out on the deck and we are going to serve the lionfish two of them we're going to grill the third one the big one my wife made into ceviche and we're going to have a beautiful, fresh dinner. And the head's big enough, we want to get the cheap meat out of it. So we got those guys grilled up. And here they are on the plate. All right, all right. The head may not be that appetizing, but the cheek meat was great. And you can't beat the view. Anyway, hey, I highly recommend Forever Young. If you're in the Florida Keys, they will tailor an experience to whatever you want. And we thoroughly enjoyed them, and we will be back. But for now, thank you for watching, and as always, I am enjoying retirement.